Welcome to our next video. We're talking about Markowitz portfolio theory. And as a part of Markowitz portfolio theory, we need to discuss the way of how to compute, of how to calculate variance and standard deviation. You need to know how to calculate expected return, how to calculate variance and standard deviation, and of course, uh, covariance and the correlation coefficient. So now, this is the formula depicting variance. And if you compute the square root of the variance, you get standard deviation. So be careful about sigma squared or just sigma. As we have two different shares, we have two different shares, share A, share B. And let there be two, three different, three different situations with share A and share B. We have 1% return, like say in the first month. In the first month, there's a 1% return of share A and a 2% return for share B. One, two. In the second month, we have, say, 2% share A, 4% share B, and 6% in March, 6% to put in the third month, so for example in March, 6% for share A and 6% share B. Now we need to calculate the expected returns first, which is very, which is very easy to do, and then we get the variance and the standard deviation. Now, expected return, 1 plus 2 plus 6 is equal to 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3%. 3 so we subtract the expected return. We subtract the expected return from the return in every single situation, giving us minus 2% in the first month, minus 1% here and 3% there, which means we just subtracted 3. 1 minus 3 is minus 2. 2 minus 3 is equal to minus 1. 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. And then we, we square. We just compute the square numbers of those numbers. Minus 2 times minus 2 is equal to 4. Minus 1 times minus 1 is equal to plus 1. 3 multiplied with 3 is equal to 9. And so, the sum of those squares, the sum of those squares, 4 plus 1 plus 9 is equal to 14. So as a result, we have 14, and normally we multiply with the probabilities, with the probabilities of every single situation. But be careful now, be careful about this. If we have three different situations, we divide by two because we divide by n minus one. And this is very, very important for you to understand if you have different numbers, if you have n different numbers, then you need to divide by n minus one, <clears throat> by n minus one, which gives us 14 divided by two and not by three. 14 divided by n minus one, very important for you to keep in mind. 14 divided by two equal to seven. And that's the variance, that's the variance. And the square root, the square root of seven is equal to 2.646. And again, it is sometimes hard to believe, but it's true. The standard deviation is computed in percent as, we, as the numbers themselves are, are measured in percent. So is the standard deviation, but the variance is not. The variance is not, it is squared percent, percent squared, right? Which is sometime, which is somehow hard to understand or not, we cannot understand it, percent squared, but that's the way it is. And that's why we look at the standard deviation, not at the variance. The variance is just in between. There's no use in computing the variance only. We need to always compute standard deviation. <clears throat> so, given those numbers, 1 to 6, there is a standard deviation of 2.646%. So, 
Same situation holds true, the same computation holds true for share b. We have 1 divided by 3 minus 1 by n minus 1 and we have three different situations. And here it is 8 because 2 minus 4, 2 minus 4 is minus 2, 4 minus 4 is 0, 6 minus 4 is equal to 2 and we get the squares. We have to compute the squares of those numbers. Minus 2 times minus 2 is 4, 0 times 0 is 0 and 2 plus 2 times plus 2 is equal to 4. As we take the sum it is 8. 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4 percent squared which means there's a standard deviation for share b of 2 percent. So given those numbers of 2, 4 and 6 there's a standard deviation of 2 percent. That's very important. As we discuss Markowitz portfolio theory first we need to compute expected values. Second, we need to compute variances and standard deviations. Third, and in a different video, we need to look at covariance and correlation coefficient and then we have to compute the expected return of a portfolio and the variance and of course standard deviation of a portfolio. So um, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.